Oh, don't you dare take my good power up. All right, we got a good power up. Damn it! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're jumping into Raiden. So the year is 2090. An alien species called the Crenassians have taken over Earth and blah, blah, blah. We have to shoot them all in some space age futuristic ships. So we got some awesome background music to start us off here. Uh, we're playing today on the Atari Jaguar, by the way. So despite being an arcade game, I uh, wanted to give this one a shot on the Jaguar because we don't normally get to play Jaguar games. And, I mean, just the, the look and sound of this game, I mean, it the, the music sounds awesome, the graphics look awesome. I guess for an Atari Jaguar game, it's, you know, a, I, I wouldn't want to say let down necessarily, but the Atari Jaguar is supposed to be like leagues beyond Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, you know. They were busy, you know, quarreling over 16 bits. Meanwhile, the, meanwhile, the Atari was 64 bits, you know, the Jaguar was so advanced. But, you know, you play the Jaguar and it feels just like, uh, you know, a Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. But but anyway, don't let that take away from the game here today. As I say, this game looks awesome. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and hop in here and we're going for the eight credit mode. Now, the one downside to playing to not playing this on the arcade is I'm not going to be able to credit feed my way to victory. So we're it's very unlikely we're going to see the end of the game here today. But nonetheless, I think we're going to have some fun with this one. Uh, this game comes to us from a fairly unknown Japanese developer who are really famous for creating uh, Dynamic Duke, which is kind of an interesting looking third person uh, shooter game. Uh, and this, Raiden. Uh, they made the Raiden series all the way until they went bankrupt in the 90s sometime. And then I think ex-employees actually purchased the Raiden, uh, the Raiden IP, except for the trademark, which I think was just totally abandoned. Oh man, look at these graphics. This is awesome. So alien tanks and stuff are coming at us from the from the uh, the, the bush in the forest. They're attacking us. There's like alien planes. I, I want that M. I think it's a machine gun. Oh, we have homing missiles. I will take it. Oh, this is awesome, actually. Oh, I, well, okay, down we go. Uh, is there an auto fire, by the way? Oh, there's bombs you can drop. So that's something. Okay, so there's three buttons. I mean, the Atari Jaguar even reminds me of the Sega Genesis in that it has three buttons. You know, like the Sega Genesis had three buttons compared to the Super Nintendo's... Well, Super Nintendo had four buttons and they had L and R, so it technically had like six, but I kind of think of it as a four button controller. Because uh, the shoulder buttons are, are really like their own thing on any controller, but I can't get this B. Get back here, B. Oh, we got it. All right, the B has upgraded our ship. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I really love the look and feel of this game so far. I mean, I was reading about how how cool this game looked before even you know turning this game on today. So it's kind of coming into this this game anticipating that I was going to like the look and feel of it. But they did not disappoint. Um, the Thousand One book actually has a very interesting description crap of this game. It basically says, you know, there's nothing all that special about this game. It kind of has a somewhat, you know, standard shoot the alien plot it has standard mechanics it's you know a little on the hard side but uh that was the case for a lot of old games so it's not like especially hard um and as i was reading the description from the book i was like why why are they telling me to play this game it does not they're not speaking highly of it um god i'm sucking by the way <laughs> um but yeah they weren't speaking that highly of it in the book and and ultimately the book said look it's kind of like a no frills game but at the same time, it's like it's done really well. And actually, that, I appreciated that. I appreciated that because I was kind of thinking, you know what? Like some hidden gems, some games out there that I would consider hidden gems don't have like a mind bending mechanic. They're not doing, you know, shooters or platformers or anything like that in a way I've never seen before. You know, some games do. There's certainly some games I would consider hidden gems where I'm like the mechanics in this game just you do not see elsewhere. Like it is so unique and so cool. But then I think there is like a class of other games that I would consider gems that are like just solid. They're just solid games. They, they don't break the mold, but what they do is they just do a really high quality version of something like a shooter. Oh God, my thumb is getting so tired from this. Uh, I, I miss having turbo controllers. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, but I'm like clicking every single press. 
There is no turbo controller here. My, my thumb is going to get cramped by the time uh, we're done playing today. Memories of old school gaming, guys. We all had really strong thumb muscles in the 80s and 90s on our Nintendos. Because you had to. I mean, unless you were rich enough to have a turbo controller. But that, that, that was like the equivalent, the gaming equivalent of having like a personal trainer. Not even actually, because a personal trainer would still make you do the work. A uh, turbo button is the gaming equivalent of a rickshaw. You're sitting on your butt while some other person is running <laughs> and carrying you. That's what a turbo controller is. Uh, it is the rickshaw of gaming. Uh, not that I'm above using one. If I had one, uh, I would totally use it. Uh, but I don't have one uh, set up here for the Atari Jaguar. And I'm not going to stop playing. I can't, I can't stop. Once you start, you can't stop. So we're just going to keep going. Uh, but yeah, so this game, you know, there isn't really much to say in terms of like what sets it apart from the pack. I think it's just like a very well done shooter. So like if you're a fan of shooters, especially if you like the old school, you know, games from the 80s and 90s. I mean, the graphics and stuff are amazing, you know, like like it is true. Man, I'm sucking. <laughs> it is true that uh, things look good. Oh, God, this is the this is the like auto shoot. Look how look how pathetic that is. No, you have to you have to like tap the buttons. We have to be our own rickshaw drivers today. So the world has really gone to a big old mess here by the looks of it. I mean, not only have aliens, not only have the Carnassians landed and taken over our cities, but it's like they're fully on man. They're, they're manufacturing tanks and they're moving precious resources by rail, as we saw just a screen or two ago. You know, they've they've really sort of made themselves at home here. So. I don't know what good me flying around and shooting a bunch of their military is going to do. I don't know if it will create the social change we're looking for here, but I got to believe it will. And in the 80s, in the 80s, what we learned is anytime bad guys do something, if you punch and shoot enough people, you can solve that problem. So, you know, as, as a child of the 80s, I am of the mindset that if we punch and shoot enough aliens, some kind of positive societal change will emerge from that. So, you know, I'm going to stop asking questions. I think asking questions is a, is a dangerous route that leads you to punch and shoot less aliens. So I'm going to stop and we're just going to focus on the punching and the shooting. I do love the parallax backgrounds they got going on here. Like the highway is is over top of the, the green grass and the buildings and stuff down there. And it really does create a sense of depth. Like I feel like I'm high up on the highways. And then now it kind of feels like we're lower again. Um, I love when shooting games do that. I think 1942 did it as well. Like it's not like an uncommon thing to see in shooting games, but every time I see it, I and just I just really enjoy it. It's just so interesting how 2D pixel art sprites can be given the illusion of depth and create this interesting illusion of height. Um, I know parallax scrolling. I mean, it's like in Mario Brothers and like Moon Patrol and stuff. Like it's in all sorts of games of all sorts of different genres. But I, for some reason, I'm really wowed when it's uh, games that kind of look like this, you know, shooter games that uh, from sort of the 90s ish era uh, where you have parallax scrolling that makes you feel like you're high up. For some reason, that just really gets to me. Man, I'm just bombing here. Can I dump bombs, by the way? Oh, I blew up everything on the screen. Dump more bombs. That seemed to be effective. Might as well use these babies before I die. Eat it. Eat the bombs. More bombs! Bombs for all. All right, he's starting to go on fire here. So the bosses, when the bosses get damaged, they seem to sort of like light up on fire. It's a pro tip that you're hurting them. Crap. Okay, my my only uh, strategy here is just survive long enough to dump another bomb. Oh God, oh, I can't believe I survived that. I feel like shooting games are all about sort of, I mean, obviously, but they're all about surviving the pattern of bullets that floods out of your enemies. And the, the patterns that appear on the screen in the bullets, they kind of remind you guys of like kaleidoscope patterns that you get. Like if you remember kaleidoscopes, I think it's kaleidoscopes I'm thinking of, where you kind of put pens in and you draw like ovals through a repeated circle and you get like really funky patterns. I feel like people who naturally understand or see the world in terms of kaleidoscopes would be good at shooters because they would understand the patterns that uh you know the bullets are gonna make so i don't know just my random thought of the day okay so here's a question for you guys thinking about how this game is just like a really a solid but standard shooter 
But that is sometimes okay and sometimes, you know, all you would want to consider a game a hidden gem. You know, what is what what other games out there sort of fit this mold? So are there other games you can think of, other retro games that are kind of like not too many people know about them? They might be slightly smaller. You know, this game was not hugely successful when it first launched, although eventually it did sort of catch on. Um, but whether whether you're thinking of a game that did catch on or not, are there games that you guys can think of that you would say, yeah, I think this is a bit of a hidden gem, and it's not that it does anything unique, it doesn't break the molds, it's just really good at what it does. You know, it's just a really good platformer, a really fun racing game, or something like that, you know? Uh, because again, there's no real mechanic in this game that we haven't seen in basically every other shooting game. So, so what are the other hidden gems like this? Maybe there are other shooters that you can think of. Uh, but maybe there are other genres of game. I don't know. It's kind of curious if you got like what what kind of games you guys can come up with. So yeah, feel free to feel free to sound off in the comments down below. Let me know. Let all of us know what some cool hidden gem games that don't break the mold are. I'd like to know. Maybe there's a whole genre of. It's like a subgenre of subgenres. It's like hidden hidden gem great games that don't break the mold. It's like very specific level of. I want to say gaming mediocrity, but you guys know what I mean. I don't actually mean like the game sucks or anything like that. I just mean like, um, you know, anyway, you, you guys know what I mean. Man, we had a cool gun, but we just died. That sucked. Did you guys see for like a brief second? We were shooting like uh, a wall of like laser blue and then we died and I picked up the power up. I thought maybe that would uh, restore it, but it took us back down to like blue level one. Damn. So obviously shooters are not the genre I am best at. Um, because I keep on dying. <laughs> and again, you know, there's nothing very my mystical or magical or unique about this game uh, in the broadest sense. So, like, anyone who's basically good at shooters should be good at this. But I feel like the genres I'm best at include platformers, first-person shooters if I'm not playing multiplayer, if I'm playing, you know, against AI or computers. I'm, I would consider myself decent or good at first-person shooters. When I play against people, I suck. Uh, I'm not I'm not a big competitive gamer. I like I enjoy the solo activity of gaming. Um, I find competition stressful and I find, you know, constantly depending on your friends to play co-op games with them kind of annoying because honestly, my friend, nobody is addicted. Uh, nobody is as addicted to gaming as me. So waiting on other people is just annoying. Um, but I do play co-op games with people sometimes and I occasionally play competitive. It's just not uh, not often. Boom, eat a bomb. Yeah, how's that taste? Okay, we got some kaleidoscope patterns. Boom, we did another bomb! Keep forgetting I have bombs. There we go. Hey, we're new, you know, we're not doing too bad. We're on like level three here. So that's not too bad. Um, but yes, I kind of, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, here, here's a bit more backstory though for this game here. So we're in a Cranat, we're, oh, I was about to say we're in a Cranassian ship. We're not in a Cranassian ship but we're in a ship that's based on Cranassian technology. So in this game's lore, um, I guess the humans captured some Cranassian technology. They put up some fight and were able to get a bit of technology. I don't know where the humans are in terms of if the entire military has fallen. I gotta imagine there's some sort of organized resistance against the humans. Um, by the way, it is kind of interesting. You can scroll left and right over the map. That is actually a somewhat unique feature of this game. Speaking about how this game has no unique features. Um, we want the homing. I don't know if we do. Oh, we can get both. Oh. So, I mean, I guess this game does have the ability to, you know, slowly scale up your weapons. If you don't die all the time. Like me, I died going for the M. I was going to say maybe we can actually slowly scale our weapon up and then I just died twice in a row. We're never gonna see a scaled weapon. Um, but anyway, we are in sort of some captured, a ship based on captured Cranassian technology. I've always liked that, not necessarily that trope, but that idea, because I don't think it's like a trope. Uh, but the idea that, uh, you know, human resistance will capture more advanced alien technology and then base a weapon off of that, I think is quite cool. Um, famously, it was, it was, you know, the backstory in Halo where Ma the reason Master Chief has shields, not only because regenerative health is a good gameplay mechanic, but sort of in the lore of the game, the reason he has shields, oh God, um, is because, damn it, 
Uh, the shields. No, game over. Okay, let's play one more time. That was rather short. I can do one more here. Uh, but let's go ahead and enter our initials and become one with the ages. We don't want anyone to forget our achievement. Centuries from now, anthropologists will be... Digital anthropologists will be going through my old files. And they'll be like, who is this Gaming Ja? And they'll say, ah, Gaming Ja got 163,550 points in uh, the Hall of Aces. And they will bow for my reverence. Although they'll probably bow more for the people above me in the top scoreboard. They're probably not going to be impressed by being fifth in the top scoreboard of a game that was like 30 years old at the time I played it. Let's not overthink this. Um, anyway, in Halo, um, Master Chief has regenerative shields, as you may or may not know. And he is a human soldier, and they're fighting the Covenant, which is a super advanced uh, alien organization. It's not an alien race, because it's a bunch of races. It's like an anti-federation. Like a bunch of aliens that teamed up to uh, hate on humans and be super religious. Um, and... So anyway, the humans end up stealing some of that Covenant, some of that alien technology from one of the races to build Master Chief shields. But the thing that always confused me, like I really like that idea that that's how they got the shield technology. But the thing that always confused me is there are um, enemies in Halo that actually have shields, regenerative shields, just like the Master Chief. Um, and uh, these guys are called Elites. That's a human name for them. They have a, an official alien name, but I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But anyway, so there's there's aliens that have shields that function like the Master Chief shields. And then there's other aliens that have shields that don't function at all like the Master Chief shields. They're, I'm thinking of the Jackals. They sort of have literally handheld shields that they hold on to. Uh, and sort of they block incoming attacks sort of medieval style, like holding shields. Anyway, you would imagine that if humans were going to have sh uh, like a portable shield device that would regenerate, they would base it off the alien that has a portable shield device that regenerates. But no, instead, the Master Chief shields are based off of the Jackal shields. So you have elites that have shields that are like Master Chief shields. Then you have Jackals that have shields that are not like Master Chief or er yeah, that aren't like Master Chief shields, but Master Chief shields isn't based off of elite shields. It's based off of Jackal shields. I don't know. That, that little thing never 100% made sense to me. I was like, wait, how do they build shields that function like elite shields, but are based off of a different alien shield? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm sure uh, somebody who is familiar with Halo and the Halo lore can fill me in on the comments below, but uh, maybe not. Maybe we're all just going to be confused by that mystery until the end of time. Maybe, maybe in 300 years, the cultural anthropologists will be looking through, trying to understand a game called Halo, and uh, they'll be as perplexed as I was. Not, I'm not that perplexed, I should say. I, I don't want to make it seem like I spend hours and hours trying to figure this out. It was just like a little thing that I've always kind of wondered about, but uh, it's also relatively minor in the sense of like, I, I don't really care what the answer is. It's not going to take away from my enjoyment of Halo. To, to find out that, uh, you know, the shield technology is based off of a different alien race. I don't, know, I don't really care. But it's just a, just a random thought I had. Anyway, let's focus back more on the Carnassians here. So we stole their technology to make this ship. So the question is, what is special about my ship that humans couldn't figure out on their own? Maybe sort of just, it, it is kind of hovering at low speed. Maybe it's just the hovering technology, you know, just the... the very basic hover tech because other than that i'm pretty much just shooting regular bullets so and i've seen many other video games with human made ships that had where aliens had no part in creating those ships and oops i just threw a bomb for no reason um and it functions very similarly to this ship so i don't know i don't know i don't know where the alien tech is, is filtering in here um but it would be it is just kind of cool knowing that we're in a ship that, uh, you know, from stolen alien tech. Um, another game where you basically base all of your technology off of, you know, researching alien tech is XCOM, which is a game we played back when we hit the 500s, uh, which is a great game. I love XCOM. But yeah, actually, I always remember as a kid thinking that was so cool. Like the way you actually develop new technology in XCOM is like 90% of your new tech is based off of alien tech you capture and research. So you're basically just stealing their technology and figuring out how to use it against them. 
which is an awesome idea. I don't know. The idea of being a technology thief is just so interesting. Um, I guess the only other place you could steal technology from would be the future. So you could sort of be a, you could if you could time travel, you could go into the future and steal future alien or not even alien tech, future human tech. I mean, you could steal. That's the ultimate future alien tech. It's like the best of both worlds. That's what you need. Future alien technology. Let's go into the future and space. We'll just get it all. Um, I feel like that's one of the coolest things you could do with, with time travel. If you actually had time travel, though, I, I feel like at first it would be super cool. You'd be like, wow, I can go in the stock market and make all sorts of money. But it's like after you do, you know, you have time travel. Like it would, it would take you like a week to make so much money. You'd have, you wouldn't need money for the rest of your life. And it's like, now what? <laughs> what do you do after, what do you do after you have so much money? You don't know what to spend your money on. I guess you could go to like the end of time and just see what, how things turn out. But that might be super scary. I don't know. Like how far, how far in the future would you legit want to go? Look, let's imagine back to the future. Doc and Marty. Uh, have the time machine, the DeLorean, back in 1985. There's no Libyans trying to kill them. Biff isn't trying to, you know, mess up the uh, the time-space continuum. So it's like there's really nothing for Doc and Marty to do. They just have a time machine. They're sick of going back to the Wild West and getting in fights. So they decide, you know what, let's go into the future. 2015 was cool. I wonder what 2515 will be like. When they go into 2515, what would they find? What would they find? If they came to the year 2090, would they find uh, humans under alien attack from the Carnassians? Maybe. Maybe that's what they would find. I don't know. Uh, but what would you find in 2515? What would you find in 3515? What would you find in 13515? We're sticking with the 515s. I don't know. It's like the idea of going future forward in time is kind of cool, but I, I honestly would be a little scared to go more than like... 100 years in the future <laughs> like even 100 years is a lot it's almost too scary i'm like send me 50 years in the future and that's i think that's good probably as far as i want to go this boss is actually a little tough if i did not have bombs i don't know how i would fight him luckily we can just cheese him with high explosives oh get back into the explosion you go back into the explosion until you're nice and dead oh god kaleidoscope oh, i was invincible through all of that <laughs> damn it Okay, so what is a genre that you guys are good at and a genre that you guys are bad at? Question number two for the day. As I said, as I was saying earlier, I think this is what I lost my train of thought on earlier in the video. There's just a slow moving bomb flying at me. Um, there's some genres that I'm good at and some that I'm not so good at. So like platformers, first person shooters, I think I'm decent at. Um, what else am I okay at? Strategy games, I think some degree depends on the strategy game i suppose um but then there's other genres i'm not very good at you know like uh shooters like this uh where you have some kind of plane or craft and you have to dodge a whole bunch of bullets at you on the screen but then i really like shooters like contra um so it it's kind of depends on the shooter there's there's many sub genres of shooter so like ship shooters i'm not super good at contra style shooters i'm much better at but a Contra style shooter, you'd almost consider it more of a platformer than a shooter. And that gets into platformers, which I already said I'm, I'm fine at. So there's a genre I'm good at. But yeah, I don't know. Like, like what are the other genres of video games? I guess there's like sports games, which uh, I don't think I'm very good at. Maybe I'm like passable at, but um, I just don't play them enough, I think. And, and I never did. Oh, God, I can't believe I dodged that. I'm like actually really trying here because I really want to see like fully upgraded guns again. I think the secret to doing well in this game is to get fully upgraded guns and damn it, I had the blue gun, which I liked, and then I just downgraded it to this other stupid one. Damn it. It'd be nice to have a couple of hits. I won't lie. Um, but I mean, you know, you take what you can get. I mean, what are other genres of games? I mean, there's like RPGs and stuff. I think I'm fine at RPGs, but I don't play tons of them just because they're sometimes quite slow, but sometimes I quite like them. Um, like tactical strategy versus real-time strategy. I think I'm I'm pretty good at tactical strategy when I put my mind to it. 
Uh, Real-time strategy, if it's a game that I know, I'm obviously... I mean, everyone's better at games that they know, but, um, you know, like Command & Conquer and StarCraft and all that stuff. I played a lot of that. Uh, oh, don't you dare take my good power-up. All right, we got a good power-up. Damn it! I was going to say, we have to keep this thing. It went away in two seconds. Well, that's about the lifespan of a good power-up in this game. You have about two seconds with it, and then kiss that baby goodbye. Let's blow up this guy's exhaust port. Just dump a bomb on him. That one bomb did work, man. Like, totally decimated his ship, damn it. I, I think, like, this sounds like a stupid problem, but I think maybe the, the reason that I'm bad at this game is I'm my eyes tend to be focused on the enemy and less on my ship. Like, I'm watching my ship out of my peripheral vision. I don't know, maybe that's, like, the dumbest way to do it. Okay, there, I just actually focused my eyes on my ship and was able to dodge all that stuff, so. Maybe I'm just, maybe my eyes are literally in the wrong spot for this game. Uh, who knows. Um, this game, by the way, uh, started off as an arcade game. As I said, today we're playing the Atari Jaguar. Uh, this game came out on many other systems, though. I mean, I think it had the Sega Genesis port. It was on, like, the PC Engine and stuff. Um, it was on the, it was on DOS as well. And here's here's kind of a fun fact. The DOS port was handled by a guy named Nigel Freddy Conroy. Freddy is in quotes, indicating it is a nickname. Um, there were other people too, by the way. It wasn't just Nigel Freddy Conroy here. But when I when I read that, I was like, Nigel Freddy Conroy. So Freddy is the guy's nickname? How does that work? How does a man named Nigel get the nickname Freddy? It's like if my nickname was Doug. I'm like, hi, I'm Jay. People call me Doug. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know, this, was this, is this guy's name Nigel or is it Freddy? I mean, I guess legally it's Nigel, but he prefers Freddy. So, make that, make of that what you will. Um, but actually, that intrigued me so much, I tried to Google the guy, because I was like, what else has Nigel Freddy Conroy been up to? I'm really curious. Um, and the man's a ghost! He doesn't exist! Doesn't exist. Can't find him on the internet at all. So my suspicion now is that there never never was a Nigel Freddy Conroy, and the man was just like a tax shelter for his small indie company that was porting uh, Japanese arcade games to Atari Jaguar. I think he existed only on paper, frankly. I think Nigel Freddy Conroy was kind of a scheme to uh, disenfranchise, you know, uh, the taxpayers of well-earned... Uh, income. Oh, get the blue, get the blue, get the blue, get the blue! Yes, we got it! Anyway, Nigel Freddy Conroy, who are you, sir? If anybody knows this man, please send me a message. I would love to talk to him and find out where Freddy came. That, that's my only question. You know, he's probably like in a, in a cave in Malaysia somewhere. You know, hiding from society and I'll track him down. He'll be like, you've come all this way, what do you want to know? I'm like, why do people call you Freddy? He's like, People just seemed to call me Freddy. It was a mistake one day. We thought it was funny. And I'll be like, thank you. Head back home. Hop back on the plane, head home from Malaysia. That's all I wanted to know. I'm just, it's just, it's just so weird. I'm just so curious. I don't know. Um, the only thing that I can think of that's even somewhat comparable is how like some names have really odd nicknames. Like I've always thought it was weird that uh, Dick is the short form of Richard. Like that, that is like maybe back in the day, you know, Dick was just sort of like not an offensive word or whatever like that. But it's like nowadays, it's very unfortunate that Dick is your is your nickname. Um, or in Game of Thrones, you know, Ned Stark is uh, not nickname, but his. I, well, I guess it was actually, but the short form of his name was Ned, but his name was Eddard. It wasn't Nedard. So people called him Ned, even though his name was Eddard. Kind of interesting. Um, anyway, we're doing pretty good with the upgrades, by the way. Look at this. Three missiles. And we got a spread shot here. So my goal is going to be to bomb this mofo. Just keep him... Keep him at bay. Oh, God. A bullet almost got me. Oh, man. Imagine! I was say, imagine if we continue to get upgrades and we can get more and more and more and more. How cool would that be? But literally, I died. As I was, as I was uh, ruminating about how cool it would be to not die, I died. There's irony in that, I'm sure. 
but I'm not a poet. I don't understand irony. Irony is like one of those things that I learned in like grade 12 English that I don't understand. Because everything I thought was ironic isn't an actual, the actual technical literary definition of irony, I still don't understand to this day. You know, it's one of those things that it's like it's commonly misunderstood. And, you know, like that Alanis Morissette song, you know, isn't it ironic? Apparently, every, nothing in that song is ironic. But those all seem ironic to me, so I clearly don't get irony. So, short, short version of this little uh, rant here is we need more poets watching the channel so that they can um, help correct us and help teach us all about what true irony really is. And uh, I think it would be pretty ironic if we had some poets watching right now. I don't know if that's the proper definition of irony, but I'm just throwing it out there. All right, we died again. All right, how many continues do we have, by the way? Oh, we're on zero credits. Oh, this is it. Oh my God, okay. Things just got ratcheted up here. The tension level, for some reason, my, my palms just immediately got sweaty when I realized I'm on my last credit. Uh, I don't know how many levels this game has. I mean, they all seem, I mean, they are they definitely are all each unique, but then in other ways, they're all kind of the same, where it's just a bunch of tanks and ships flying at you with some slight, slight differences. Um, but I mean, obviously the train and stuff is changing. The bad guys are changing around a bit. These turrets weren't in the last level and so on. Uh, we're now here at the rails, trying to take out their mining infrastructure, I imagine. What have these aliens been up to? This kind of, for some reason, this reminds me of Battlefield Earth. Remember that old, uh, I was going to say Nick Cage, but it's not Nicolas Cage. It's John Travolta, uh, the Scientology movie. Uh, not, not Dianetics or like an actual, but that was a movie written by L. Ron Hubbard. Um, and it was called Battlefield Earth. And it's like the stupidest movie you've ever seen. It's a horrible movie. No, game over. Um, but the premise is that aliens take over Earth and they start strip mining it. And then humans have to learn how to fly jets that have been in storage for like a hundred years in order to fight the aliens and, uh, you know, win the day. But anyway. All right, we are on the Hall of Ages twice. So when the future anthropologists come looking at my personal files and load this game up, they're going to find uh, Nig, Ian, Kev, and Jay. And they'll say, who is this Jay? And then they'll look down and see Cole and Rob. And then they'll see Jay again. They'll say Jay was very prolific. So prolific, he earned two spaces in the Hall of Aces. And they will be quite impressed. <laughs> anyway... Um, Raiden here is one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And in terms of that recommendation, I kind of have two diametrically opposing thoughts. First of all, I don't think this is a game you have to play before you die, because it's just a very simple shooter game. It's a, it's a fine game, uh, but it didn't, like, stand out to me as something, like, totally unique. On the flip side, considering our discussion about hidden gems, that sometimes a hidden gem is just a game that takes a genre and just does a really good job of it, this seemed like a fun shooter. The graphics, I really love the look of the graphics. I really love the music. Um, it was hard, but I wouldn't say it was unreasonably hard. Like we got pretty far actually. And with a bit more effort and skill, I could see myself dodging more shots. Um, apparently you can uh, play this game co-op. So if you do like shooters, you could play this with a friend and so on. Um, and it was a fairly well-loved franchise, Raiden was, uh, back when it was around. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this game. Um, just in terms of, like, must-playing, it just doesn't strike me as either iconic enough or unique enough for me to say, yeah, you must play this. But in terms of whether this would be a good game to check out, I'd say, yeah, like, it's, it seems like a totally uh, playable, enjoyable game. So there you go. Anyway, what do you guys think of Raiden here? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Do you have other thoughts or opinions? Do you have fond memories or tips or tricks that you could lay on us down below? If so, comment your comment in the comments below, and I look forward to reading it. And whatever you think of the game, hopefully you had fun here today. If you did, don't forget to like the video and all that jazz. And uh, otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, you guys take care of yourselves, and peace. As I was uh, ruminating about how cool it would be to not die, I died. There's irony in that, I'm sure. Damn it!